Hello and welcome to another video where I make something geeky in my workshop. In a previous video I mentioned that I had found a Game of Thrones music box movement and that I wanted to try and make some sort of Game of Thrones inspired chest or jewelry box to use it in. So that's what I'm going to do today. Game of Thrones. When trying to come up with some sort of chest or box design that was Thrones themed, all I could really come up with was the dragon egg box that Danny got for her wedding. There are not exactly a lot of super clear images of that box online, but I found enough that I thought I could probably improvise a lot. So the process of recreating the design on this box was pretty involved and time consuming. I actually started out putting together a really detailed tutorial covering exactly how I made all of these little bits and pieces in Illustrator, but that part ended up being nearly 15 minutes long all by itself. I am going to breeze through this part instead. If there is actual interest in a full-fledged tutorial for Illustrator going over these specific techniques, I could go ahead and do that, I just need to make sure that there's actual interest in it. So if you want that, comment down below! So one of the things that I did keep in mind while doing this process was the proportions of the box. My box is going to be a lot taller in proportion to the rest of the box than the in-show prop is. And this is specifically because it's a music box that needs space for the music box movement to exist. But it's also going to have a false bottom and a hidden compartment. See, this thing isn't going to just be a music box, it's also going to be a chest that contains three small dragon eggs. Those eggs will be sitting on what appears to be sand, just like in the show. Those eggs in sand will be removable, and beneath them is enough space that it will still be a functional jewelry box, and contain the music box movement. Anyway, for this idea to work, first I need to make some dragon eggs to go in the box. I found this dragon egg on Thingiverse, and I liked it quite a lot. I also felt that it is a much better match for the show eggs than anything else I came across. It's by J. Botero, and I'll link to it in the description. I've got MakerBot Replicator 3D printers, the first ones, so these guys are getting on in years, and I use Simplify 3D to export my G-code. And here we are at the 3D printer. Just going to go through a quick time lapse here. You can see it making the raft and the support material first, and then slowly making its way up. This whole thing took about 2 hours and 40 minutes to print, which isn't awful, but it's still not exactly super fast either. And the print is done! Now to remove it from the print bed. I use a spatula. And remove the support material. Fortunately, it came off pretty easily, and it didn't leave too awful a mess behind. Plus, I've got plans for smoothing these guys out. So I printed these eggs in ABS plastic. This information is important because there's this neat trick you can do with ABS prints called acetone vapor treatment. To prep for it, I'm going to drill a small hole in the bottom of the egg here and super glue it to this little stand I made out of a toothpick and two pieces of scrap wood. Basically, I need to keep it suspended in the air and not touching the bottom. Acetone can literally melt ABS plastic. Acetone also vaporizes and evaporates very quickly and easily. You don't need to get stuff hot for acetone to vaporize, it does it at room temperature. To do this technique, you need an airtight glass container, or otherwise acetone safe airtight container, that is large enough to hold your whole object. I find it works best if you attach a couple strips of paper towel to the inside of the container. Make sure that they're long enough to sit in the bottom of the jar, but will also not touch your print. Now pour a small amount of acetone in the jar. You don't need an awful lot, but make sure that there's like a visible puddle in the bottom. Also make sure that it's soaking into the paper towel strips. This will help it aerosolize faster, I think. I could be wrong. Depending on how large your print is, how large your jar is, and how much acetone you put in the jar, the amount of time it'll take to get results can vary a lot. Make sure you check on it within a half an hour to an hour and see if you need to take the lid off and air it out. So I did all that three times. I printed three eggs and I acetone vapor treated three eggs and this is what I got. You can see that they were each left in for slightly different amounts of time because some of them are a little smoother than others, but overall I think they came out pretty good. So we'll sidestep again and actually get some of the wood cut. I loaded up my files in the laser cutter software and let it do its thing. Once the pieces were cut, I used a radial hand sander to smooth the wood surface. And time for assembly! I just use regular wood glue and I use a toothpick to apply it between the notches. Once the glue was set, I took my Dremel in with a grinding drum and rounded over all of the edges. 
I use blue painter's masking tape to tape the base and the lid of the box together to make sure that I smoothed over the edges consistently from the lower part to the upper part. With the edges rounded over, I started putting masking tape all over everything except for the edges. I'm going to apply wood filler along every single edge and smooth them all over, but I don't want to run the risk that any of that wood filler is going to go anywhere beyond the edges. The last thing I want to do is to fill in the etched lines that I've got all over this thing. And applying the wood filler! This stuff is basically putty that air dries fairly quickly and is then sandable. Once it was all dry, I went over and sanded everything. And then I removed the tape and did a bit more sanding since the tape and the putty left an edge. This wasn't entirely undesirable though, as these edges kind of work with the design of the box. I did a quick test of the music box movement to make sure it was in the right place, and I measured how big the cover needed to be. Movement removed. Time to put on the primer and the interior black paint coat. I just use a flat black paint for the interior and I let that be the primer coat for the outside. While cutting out the box that covers the music movement, I also cut out these little supports. The three corner supports plus the movement cover will act as support for the false bottom. I had to assemble the movement's cover real quick and I sanded the edges and rounded them over. I used the wood filler on the edges too. Since I had the wood filler out, I decided to use it on those holes in the bottom of the eggs. The acetone has smoothed them over all fairly nicely, but they've all got holes in the bottoms where they were mounted to those little sticks and I need to fill them up. They may not be wood, but the wood filler actually worked perfectly fine for this. It really is just air drying putty. Quick test fit. Everything looks good and is heading in the right direction. Quick coat of paint for the base and the false bottom and a coat of black on the movement's cover and the little corner support that I glued in. Time to paint the eggs! The three eggs are each different colors. There's a golden one, a green one, and a red one. And none of them are a solid color. They're all kind of gradients that go from one shade to another. So I used a lot of different colors to get the desired effect. With each of the eggs, I finished them off with a dusting of metallic color. Silver on the green egg, gold on the yellow gold one, and a bit of gold and a bit of bronze on the red one. So I realized I managed to either not record or lose the footage of me putting on the first exterior coat of the paint for the boxes. But it was just brown, so it's really not all that important. Just trust me, the outside of the box is brown now. But flat brown is not good enough, so I started working on a stencil for all of those intricate details on the box. I applied blue painter's tape to these pieces of cardstock. This ended up being an enormous pain in the butt, and there were probably several factors that contributed to it. First off, I shouldn't have applied the tape to the white side of the cardstock. I thought this would remove easier from the smoother surface, but all I really wanted to do was take the white up with it. The second thing that probably caused me a headache was that I took a big break right here and literally left this tape on the cardstock for a week. I went out of town mid-project, and that was probably the worst time to leave it, but what can you do, right? In any case, once I was back and finally ready to remove the cut masking tape, it did not want to come off cleanly. It took a lot of tedious effort to get it off, and then to get it placed onto the box, but I did manage it. Finally, with all the masking tape in place, I took the box back over to the painting station and applied a coat of a slightly lighter brown to the whole box and its lid. Tape removal! And you can see the masking job was hardly perfect. The tape was too messed up from the struggle I endured getting it off the cardstock and onto the box. I had a moment here where I considered doing the whole paint job all over and it was a daunting and depressing thought, but I decided to try one more thing before doing that. I took the box back over and applied a dusting of bronze metallic paint over the whole thing. This Rust-Oleum bronze paint that I've got isn't like the silver or the gold metallic paints I've got. It's almost more like a glitter paint than anything else. It put a coating of bronzish glitter over the whole thing, but it wasn't totally opaque, so you could see the difference between the darker brown and the lighter brown base details. But all the fuzzy edges were obscured. It was actually a success! I applied the same bronze paint to these little dot embellishments I got. I put the little dots over as much of the chest as I could. I only had so many of these things, so I couldn't put nearly as many dots on as I kind of wanted to, but I think I found a good balance. Okay, dots done. Time to put the music box movement in place. And now gluing in the movement's cover guard. So now I'm starting the next big process, 
and the one I was the least sure would work out. So in the show, the eggs in the chest are sitting on a bed of sand. I wanted to recreate that look, but if this thing is going to be removable, obviously it can't be real sand. I decided I wanted to take some sand and mix it with some clear epoxy and create the false bottom with the eggs. To do this, I needed to start with a form to hold the epoxy in. And for this, I used foam core board. Basically, the center is like styrofoam while it's coated on each side with a paper plasticky stuff. I traced the size of the box and added two inches in each direction and then used a box cutter to cut the whole shape out. Then I used the box cutter again, but this time I did not cut all the way through. I cut through the top paper layer and the styrofoam, but not the bottom layer. This allowed me to bend the foam board along these edges. I folded them up and used a hot glue gun to secure the edges. I applied hot glue all along the inner seams too and I smoothed them over with a little wooden stick. It's important to be really sure that you get all of the edges totally covered with hot glue or else the epoxy will leak out. With the box done, I put the false bottom into the mold and started adding sand. Now this is the point where I made a really big mistake. You see, I totally forgot to apply mold release to the box's false bottom first. And that will come back to haunt me later. Anyway, I didn't want too much sand so I put little bits in at a time. I put the eggs in place and worked to shape the sand around the eggs. I used easy cast clear epoxy for this. This stuff is one to one epoxy, that means that one part A, one part B, and they're supposed to be the same weight. And it's important that you get it as exact as possible or it'll cure poorly or not at all. The last time I used this stuff I didn't pay very much attention and it ended up sticky and it never set right. I used a scale just to make sure I was as exact as possible. This stuff takes a full 24 hours to cure, so you've got plenty of time for stirring. Don't skimp out on this step, there's no rush, do it proper. The instructions say to mix for two minutes, pour it into a new cup, and mix for another minute, so I actually did that this time. I poured the epoxy into the mold and it was obvious that it wasn't enough. I pressed the eggs down into the epoxy and sand, and I think this worked out well since it made sure that the eggs were nicely held in place and it pushed the epoxy into the sand around them pretty well. I mixed up another batch of epoxy. I added it in little bits and I even added a bit more sand as I went. I mixed the sand and the epoxy together and used my gloved fingers to push things around a bit and get the shape I wanted. 24 hours later and it's time to demold. Pulling the sides off was easy enough, but getting the bottom off was a real pain since I forgot the mold release. I took the whole thing over to my new belt sander that my hubby got me for my birthday, yay, and started working on smoothing the bottom and the sides. I had to cut out these little corner bits that the supports were supposed to fit into, but otherwise it all worked out perfectly. It's fairly heavy, but also sturdy, and the sand is secured in shape and there is no crumbling. Time to quickly add in all the hardware. Back hinges, front clasp, and little handles on each of the sides. Grind down all the little points that broke through on the inside for the screws. And it's actually done! Oh my god, it's done! I spent ages on this thing and took a huge break in the middle when I wasn't sure it was even going to work out after all, but I'm glad I ended up finishing it in the end. I've got to say, I'm probably not going to be selling these on my shop, not unless someone really, really wants one and begs for it. Maybe I'll sell this one, but I'm not sure I'm going to offer to make any more. This thing was a huge and intensive project, but I do have one more of the Game of Thrones music movements and I gotta do something with it, so we'll see. But I'm out of epoxy and I'm out of little dots, so I'd have to get more of both of those before I could make another one of these things. I'll admit it's certainly not the best version of the song ever made, but it's really not that bad. Especially considering that they've only got 18 notes to work with and this tiny little drum. I do love this thing though. It came out so awesome in the end. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this rather epic journey. It's been both fun and trying at times. Check out my channel for more videos like this and subscribe if you want to see new things I put out. If you liked this video, help the channel grow and share it with your friends. You can check out my Etsy shop for other neat things that I've made. 
come back anytime and don't forget to be awesome. Bye-bye.